guys, I'm Hannah, welcome to my channel Nomadic Unicorn. Today I thought it would be really fun to sit down and have a chat to you about some of the hostels that we stayed in when travelling on the east coast of Australia. So with the east coast of Australia it's extremely common to start at the top in Cairns and work your way down the coast or start in Melbourne and work your way up the coast and we did this in six weeks and it's perfectly doable. We got the Greyhound bus and there is a link to surviving the Greyhound up here for you. We had a hop on hop off ticket so all of these places are Greyhound stops pretty much. The only one that's not is Magnetic Island but you stop in Townsville and get the ferry over. So without further ado, let's begin to tell you the truth about some of the hostels I stayed in on the east coast of Australia. The prices I'm giving you are what I've looked at as of August 2016 because in honesty I can't remember, I was a bad blogger and forgot to write them down, but that's sort of the prices at the moment. First of all is Cairns. Now Cairns has possibly one of the most famous hostels in all of Australia known as Gilligan's. By the way there's links to all the hostels I mentioned down here if you are interested. And Gilligan's is well known because it is a huge, huge hostel and it's quite a party hostel. I was super surprised when we got there just how big the place was. It's insane. It's a proper complex. It's got its own pool, bar, restaurant. It's got like a kitchen on each level. What else? It has its own like travel agency thing, nightclub. It's got its own nightclub. What hostel has its own nightclub? It's insane. The facilities are really good. Like I said, it is a party hostel. If you are looking for some rest and relaxation, perhaps this isn't the hostel for you. Although that being said, it wasn't noisy at night and we were maybe really lucky with our roommates, but we didn't get disturbed by people coming in and out. They have this really weird like tannoy system, which tells you what's going on in the evening it's quite surreal first time I heard it I was just like what the hell and they come in the room to check for alcohol good points are its location there's a free pickup from the airport in Cairns really friendly sort of hostel you're bound to meet people if you're a solo traveler even if you don't get on with the people in your room you're gonna meet people somewhere else in the hostel just because of the sheer size of it and there's people milling around all of the time bad points for me were the sort of party atmosphere of the place in a way there was just people drunk a lot and you can't go and enjoy a quiet drink in the bar literally within five Five seconds of walking into the bar with a drink in my hand I ended up getting helicoptered by an Aussie guy I will let you look that up on Urban Dictionary if you don't know what that is but I would stay there again it is a good hostel and it's a good base in Cairns next we jumped on the Greyhound and went down to Townsville and got the ferry across to Magnetic Island we stayed in Bungalow Bay Koala Village which is a YHA hostel you need to get a bus from where the ferry drops you to the hostel. The hostel's really good. It's really chilled and laid back. It's got its own little bar, bean bag, swimming pool. The accommodation itself is clean. It was like a little shack on stilts and we were really lucky because although it was an eight bed mixed room, we were the only people in it that night. The bathroom was fine, it was clean. The thing that really sells this hostel and that we most enjoyed about it was the fact it has its own little wildlife park there and you can get a ticket to go in and have a talk. You get to hold the animals, learn about them, get birds taking seeds out of your mouth. I even got to cuddle a wombat, which was incredible. So that is definitely the selling point for this hostel. And again, I would stay there a second time. We then got the Greyhound down to Airlie Beach and we stayed in Backpackers by the Bay, which is where we were Christmas day. It's a really nice little hostel. It's got a super cozy feel. Again, it has a swimming pool and a bar. They do quizzes and stuff. We won a bottle of champagne, which was disgusting. Kitchen's really good. And they've got these really cool, like little luggage storage things. So instead of having having traditional lockers they've got these suitcases that are bolted to like these wooden bits at the end of the beds and that's kind of cool the only issue that I can really think of with this hostel well actually there's two the first is that to get there you get into the coach station from the Greyhound and it's just a short walk but you have to go up these steps in the, like a hillside to actually reach the hostel and they are seriously dodgy if you've got a heavy bag or suitcase you probably want some help they don't belong to the hostel apparently it's 
it's due to the council there's a sign apologizing for them but they are a bit dodgy at night or with a heavy bag and the second thing that i thought kind of let this hostel down a little bit was that the top bunk you have to climb up a ladder at the end of the bed it's not that easy it's kind of climbing up on the racking but that's that's not a major issue. I mean, it was a really cute hostel. They like light incense in the bathrooms, there's hammocks. I would definitely recommend it. It's a really nice place to stay in Airlie Beach. We then jumped on the Greyhound yet again and got dropped off in Agnes Water to stay at Backpackers at 1770. There is supposed to be a pickup service from where the Greyhound drops you off, but unfortunately the guy that came to collect us was having issues with the bus that day, but it was literally like a five minute walk to the hostel. We got there at like 6 a.m. It was really early, so we couldn't check in till later but one of the staff was so lovely. He made us a cup of coffee, chatted it to us for ages, introduced us to other people. They've got like a massive long picnic bench in the community area outside the kitchen where everyone sort of congregates and it's really nice. So the good parts to this hostel were the sort of community feel of it. I mean, it was a little bit weird in as much as everybody kind of seemed to work there doing a job or another. It had a bit of a like hippie commune feel to it. That was a slightly strange, but it was really friendly. To be honest, I spent most of my time there in bed with flu, but Irene met loads of people and played cards and stuff. Kitchen was good and there's laundry facilities. The only issue we had was that Irene's bed didn't have a ladder at all. She was on top bunk, bless her, because I was poorly and she literally had to like vault up there. So that was a slight problem. But overall, nice hostel, centrally located and the staff were lovely. <laughs> oh dear, Harvey Bay. Um, yeah, we messed up slightly here. Yeah. So we had Christmas in Early Beach and then before we went to Fraser Island we were staying in Harvey Bay because it was sort of the easiest way for us to do it and we picked to stay in the YHA Colonial Village and this was over New Year. There's quite a few things I could say about this hostel. It's not a bad hostel, don't get me wrong, it is nice but it very much has a family vibe to it. It might just be because of the time of year we were staying, but I think it's more to do with the fact it is a wire chain, it has a campsite there. We didn't expect this and I really wish someone on TripAdvisor had said it, so I'm telling you now there is a major sort of family feel to it. There weren't that many other young backpackers there. If you are staying in Harvey Bay, you might be better off staying somewhere more central. That's another issue with it. We had to get a pickup from the hostel to take us and it was a long way out. It was a really long way out, which was a shame. It has a bar and does food and it has a lovely duck pond, which has turtles and ducks if you want to sit there and watch them. The kitchen was a bit of a letdown. You have to rent the equipment, which is a nightmare in any hostel. So we didn't really use the kitchen. Bathrooms were clean and in general it was okay, but I personally wouldn't stay there again because it just didn't have the vibe that we were hoping for, especially at New Year. <laughs> We then went on our tour to Fraser Island with Cool Dingoes, there's a link up here for that video, and we stayed in their Cool Dingoes hostel on the island during that tour. Once we'd finished the tour, we got dropped off in Rainbow Beach um, as our next destination, and Dingoes have a hostel there called Dingoes Resort, and we just stayed for one night. It was a nice room, there was like a wet room bathroom, the only issue I had with the room was that we couldn't lock the door. Again, it has a swimming pool and a bar. We had a hilarious night they did a karaoke night which was just so funny it was <laughs> it was really good cheap drinks at the bar the kitchen which we didn't use was a tiny like I don't know how anyone could cook in it but it was generally a pretty good hostel staff were really friendly and the Greyhound stop is just outside over the road for there from Rainbow Beach we went to Noosa and we stayed in our only nomads hostel in Noosa the room was really nice and it had a bonus I thought which was that it had both a shower with a lockable door and a toilet with a lockable door and sinks outside of there so if you've got eight people it wasn't like a massive fight for the bathroom and that was really really good. The kitchen 
oh my god, the kitchen. The kitchen was horrific. If you've ever watched Saw, it reminded me of something out of Saw. It had all these weird hooks, like some funky butcher shop or something. We didn't cook in the kitchen and oh no, I, I just, I hated that kitchen. I really hated it. The other weird thing about that place was it had these golden orb spiders living in the trees. I haven't got a photo to show you. I wish I had because there were so many of them and they were massive. Uh, so if you're not a fan of spiders, maybe not a good hostel for you. Was really good location. It didn't take us that long, maybe 15, 20 minutes to walk into Noosa and to the beach. We got a pickup from the bus station by the hostel for free. What else? It's got a bar and it had ladies night where guys, if you dress up as girls, you get free drink and the ladies get free drinks all night. They weren't good drink. Has a really nice little coffee bar and food place. And yeah, it's, it's a nice chilled out laid back hostel. I like that hostel and I would recommend it. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, Brisbane. This is really hard for me to be objective over. Let's explain this. In Brisbane, we stayed for, I think, four or five nights in a new hostel called Joe's Place. There are about four reviews on TripAdvisor saying it had been redone. Now, it's really close to the coach station. Uh, it was about a five, ten minute walk. It is uphill, by the way, but it wasn't too difficult with our bags. And the hostel itself is very clean, newly renovated and nice. They've got loads of great ideas and the guy that was working as the manager there was super nice. He was really trying hard. The kitchen is really well equipped and they do like a free breakfast. It's got TV, Wi-Fi, nice area, rooftop terrace with a lovely view of Brisbane. The two issues I really had with Joe's place <laughs> were, first of all, the downstairs bathroom was a mixed bathroom, which was a little off-putting. I don't mind staying in a mixed room, but I do kind of like the bathroom to be male and female, but that's, that's a personal thing, so it might not bother some people. And the second thing was the creepy owner. He didn't really know what he was doing, so he was hanging out in the hostel a lot, trying to talk to guests, and just generally being a bit of a creep. I think his mother owns the house just like near to the hostel, like round over the back. And I think that's where he lives. So he was there a lot. And poor Irene, <laughs> poor Irene got the brunt of it. He invited her to drink wine with him. He was staring down her top, making all these weird innuendos. It was fine for a group of us. We could see the funny side of it. And Irene, although a little bit freaked out, wasn't too bothered by it. But as a solo female, I would have felt a little bit weirded out, I think, there. So maybe if you're traveling on your own as a girl in Brisbane, Joe's place is not the place to stay. If you're in a group or you're with someone else, fine. It's cheap, it is clean. The bedding, I had completely new bedding. He took it out of the packet. Like, it has a lot of positives, but it also has a very creepy owner. Joe's place was certainly an experience in Brisbane and Irene and I actually when we got together the other day were reminiscing I have a book that I wrote down all the funny stuff that happened and everything and we were talking as she read her copy of the book which was a gift about some of the things that happened in Australia and we were just reading some of the times at Joe's place so I might put that in for you roll the footage Stop. Noosa, Brisbane, oh no. Longest check-in ever at Joe's place, but free icy poles. Yes, I remember that. That was oh, the longest Yeah, it really was. That was painful. It was like over half an hour, and I'm not even joking. <laughs> free Christmas pudding for a review. Nipples if cream. That came from the owner. Joe's place was an interesting place. I don't even know if it's still existing as a hostel. I will do some research on that. <laughs> So the rest of day 24, everyone in the hostel appears to be working in the hostel. <laughs> uh, guy with keys round his neck. Yeah. Query. Query. <laughs> yeah, not sure what was going on there. Day 25, Irene gets invited over to the owner's mother's house to drink wine with him. She declines and runs back to the room. Owner staring down Irene's top. Creepy fuck. <laughs> And then I left and went to bed. Surfers Paradise and the Gold Coast. We stayed in Backpackers in Paradise. The photos make it look amazing. In reality, it's a little bit more rundown than the photos would lead you to believe. This place was not my favorite place. And 
to be fair, partly it was because of my roommates and partly because it just wasn't really that clean. The cleaners had been in when we got there and yet there were pizza boxes and stuff under the bed. It was just dirty. Bathroom was all right. It was just run down. It really needed a bit of renovation. It had a nice common area, really nice bar and seating area. The kitchen, again, I wouldn't cook in. It was too small. And yeah, that that is where I woke up to vomit on a towel down by my bed from the person in the bunk above me. People hassling you to get together and go party in the town. It just wasn't my sort of hostel. It, again, if you like a party, maybe maybe it's for you. Do have a swimming pool, which we didn't go in because it wasn't, again, very clean. In all honesty, even though it's very central and just a short walk from the coach station and the staff were good, I probably, I wouldn't stay there again. In Sydney, we stayed in King's Cross, which is the red light district of Sydney. And we stayed in a hostel called the original Backpackers Hostel, which is the oldest hostel in Sydney, hence the name. A really nice hostel. From the outside, it looked so run down. We got off the metro, which is really close by, and we saw this gate all locked up and shabby. And we're like, sugar, is that where we're meant to be going? <laughs> and then we walked a bit further and there's a little pathway up and it still looked really run down. But the inside's lovely. It's got a lot of character. It's got a couple of different bathrooms. The showers, there was an issue with the showers, and I can't remember if it was the temperature or the pressure. Could have been both, actually. Um, they weren't the best, but they were cleaned really well every morning. And the rooms were really big and light and airy and spacious, and it had even a little balcony in our room, which was great. Like I said, it's not in the very centre of Sydney, but you've got lots of cafes, and the supermarket isn't far to walk whatsoever. Sydney's metro is amazing, so getting around for us from our hostel seriously was not a problem. The only bad points I can really think about with that hostel was the kitchen was really little. Again, I wouldn't want to try and cook in there with loads of other people at dinner time. The staff are really friendly and helpful. There are an awful lot of German backpackers there, which isn't a problem. I love German people. Ich liebe dick. But if you're not expecting it, that might come as a little bit of a surprise. But even though we were the minority, we still managed to find plenty of people to chat to and make friends with, and even explored the Blue Mountains with one of our roommates. So definitely recommend that hostel. And our final stop on the East Coast trip, we got the Greyhound to Melbourne, the overnight bus from Sydney, which was, oh, that's another story. It was like 12 hours and we were so tired when we got to Melbourne. Our hostel was Habitat HQ in St Kilda and it was quite a way outside of the centre of Melbourne, which when you're really tired from not sleeping very much on a seriously uncomfortable bus journey, is not ideal. We did cheat and get a taxi, who didn't even know where he was going. Again, another story, but it's really simple to get the tram into the centre from that hostel. The hostel is really modern, really nice, free breakfast. It has drinks for sale from the reception and a really nice sort of courtyard, social area, TV room, laundry room, all the usual amenities. Our room was fairly small, but it wasn't too cramped and the bathrooms were massive and super clean. Would definitely stay there again. We had a great time, lovely roommates. Can't really fault the place other than the location from the very centre of Melbourne. But it wasn't far to Ackland Street and St Kilda, so depending on what you want to see and do, definitely a good hostel to stay in. So I hope this um, has been entertaining and enlightening as to some of the hostels on the East Coast, the prices, what you can sort of expect, what's good and what's not. We had some of the best times and some of the worst times in the hostels we stayed in. The stories I could tell. If you have any questions about the hostels mentioned, please drop them down in the comments below. Don't forget, I am on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the links down there. Until next time, much love, take care, bye. So we like this sort of area very much, very, very much. I'm happy we found this because I was starting to wonder what or where the Melbourne everyone had been talking about was.